Okay, what's that? The quizzes that you took? Yes, I can pass those back. They are graded, but uh, not right now. We're going to go over the notes first, then we'll do it later. Okay? My apologies, but I want to get this done here first. Okay, so um, what we're going to do today, just kind of some application problems, just some kind of like uh, housekeeping stuff, cleaning up some loose, tying up some loose ends, maybe, okay, maybe opening up some new loose ends. We'll see here. But um, the idea is uh, we're going to just see some different ways to ask uh, some questions, some different kinds of questions that we should be able to answer, okay, in preparation for our test on Thursday. Thursday. That's right. And remember, folks, right? Okay, we have a little bit of a different kind of approach to our test than we have in the past. There is no set between now and our test on Thursday. So for those of you that maybe are like, ah, I'll just come in for set the, the day of the test and get that review with Mr. Whitmire and I'll be fine. You won't have that this time, okay? You have today in class, you have tomorrow in class. And so I would strongly encourage you, right, to really take advantage of all the time that we have, both today and tomorrow, Okay, to prepare for that test on Thursday because you won't have any set time to come in with Mr. Whitmire. Okay? So will there be a study guide? Yeah, tomorrow, I think. Okay? So let's take a look here at some of these questions. So we're going to kind of, we'll start here with number one. Okay, number one asks, which of the following are the zeros of the polynomial? f of x equals x squared minus 16. Okay, Sky says C. Sky, how did you figure out that if C was the answer here? What did you do? Okay, so you're saying 4 squared and then 4 squared minus 16 uh, would both give you zeros. Okay, and you're on the right track there. Yeah. That's not the only answer here, though. There's actually another answer. I know the directions didn't say circle all of the following, all of the correct responses, but there's actually a second one here, too. What's that? A. a would also work because also if you take negative 4 and square it, what's negative 4 times negative 4? Not negative 16, it's positive 16 because it's negative times a negative. So it's also going to be 16 minus 16, so it gives you zero as well. So both C and A are correct. Oops, I'm frozen, sorry. Okay, C and A are correct here. <clears throat> now. Can you or Sky explain again why C is correct? So he plugged the answers in here, and he knew that that was right because it gives him a zero in the end. That's what makes it a zero. Okay. Now, let's just say we didn't want to kind of guess and check here. Okay. Or maybe you were just able to see it real quick, Sky, and you weren't really guessing. You just saw the, you did the math in your head. Okay. To find a zero means that is when the polynomial is equal to what? Zero. zero. So we can just literally just take x squared minus 16 and set it equal to zero. Okay, so this is like the work you can do if you're unsure. Okay, you can take that polynomial, set it equal to zero. Okay, that was crazy. All right, now this is not a trinomial, but we could try and factor this, right? So let's see here. Um, <clears throat> let's see, to factor this, is there a GCF here that we can factor out? No? Okay, right. So let's put in a middle term here of 0x like this. Okay? There's a bug. I see. <laughs> did, did you get the bug or not? Okay. Are we going to be... Are we going to be okay? Do we need, do I need to? Well, I mean, I mean, do you feel like you need to? Did you get it, Ella? It's pretty fast. Okay. Bug 
crisis averted. All right, so back to the math, which is the name of this class, Algebra 1, okay? Um, not entomology or anything like that. Which of the following are the zeros of this polynomial? Shh. So we set our polynomial equal to zero. That's how we're going to find the zeros, by setting it equal to zero. All right, this polynomial, though, it doesn't really factor, right? There's no GCF, but we can add in that missing middle term, the 0x, okay? And so we're going to look for two numbers that multiply to negative 16, but add to make 0. And that's your 4 and your negative 4 there. Break up the middle term, okay? Group, factor by grouping here. So we'll pull it all to negative 4. We're left with an x plus 4 there. Okay, I'm running out of space, so I'll have to put it up here. Um, they both have an x plus 4 there. And they'll have an x minus 4 left over when I take out the x plus 4. And then set each factor equal to 0. So x plus 4 equals 0. x minus 4 equals 0. Okay? Subtract 4 from both sides here. We get x equals negative 4. There's one of our answers. And then add 4 to both sides here. We get x equals positive 4. And there's that one. So A has the negative 4 and the positive 4. B is also correct. I mean, those are zeros, but it's not all of the zeros, I guess. The best answer I would say here probably is A, because it has both of them. But C does have zeros, and the question just asks, which of the following are zeros? I guess it says the zeros. The zeros means maybe that, mm, maybe we shouldn't say this one then. Because both negative 4 and 4 are the zeros. 4 and 4 are not the zeros. There's one, they're one zero, but they're not the zeros. These are the zeros, all of them, right there. So probably, probably just A is the best answer there, I'd say. OK? Probably just A. All right? So you guys go ahead, number two, which of the following are the zeros of the polynomial? You guys go ahead and try, number two, right now. Boom. Give it a shot. See what you can come up with there, OK? <clears throat> number two, numero dos. Find the zeros of that polynomial. So again, set it equal to zero. Factor and solve. Okay, so Mark, go ahead. Give it a try there. Alex, you too, bud. Number two. Let's give it a try. Number two, number two, number two.
You're confused. Well, let's go over it then. Number number two. No, sorry, number number two. Okay, Mark. If we want to find the zeros of a polynomial, what should we do? Set that polynomial equal to what? Zero. Zero, yeah. Whoops. x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. And now, Mark, we have to solve this equation, right? It's equal to 0. It's an equation now. We're going to solve it, OK? We set it equal to 0 to find the zeros. How do we solve up this kind of trinomial here? We are going to add 3 to each side. So. No, because it's a trinomial, we want it to equal 0, but we have to use that zero product property. So we want it to keep equal to 0. I see what you're thinking, and that is what we normally do for like a linear equation when there's not a square here. But since we have this square, like for example, if we had just 2x minus 3, absolutely you would add 3 to both sides, divide by 2. But because we have an x squared here, we have to like factor this thing. Okay? So factor the trinomial. You do 1 times. 1 times the negative 3, and we get negative 3. And mark, we need two numbers that multiply to this, but that add to the negative 2 there. So um, give me two numbers that multiply to negative 3. That multiply to negative 3. Mm -hmm. Negative 3 and 1. Negative 3 and positive 1. Do they add to negative 2? Uh, yes. Yes. So you, 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 got your first, you got it right on the first try there. Good job. Minus 3x plus 1x minus 3 equals 0. So mark, you see here we break that middle turn up using these two numbers, minus 3x plus 1x, OK? Group. Mark from this first group, what can we factor out? What's in common to both terms here? Yes. They both have an x. Take out the x. What's going to be left behind from this? If I divide this by x, what's left? Uh, negative 3. So a minus 3, yes. But also, this would be an x. There's an x squared. That means there's two x's there. Divide the x out, so it's just an x, OK? Plus, and there's there. What can I take out from this? I have one x minus three. What can what's in common there? Yeah, just a one. Very good. And so we're left with well, one x divided by one is still just x. Negative three divided by one is still a negative three. And you see, Mark, we end up with the x minus threes there. So we'll take those out, and we're left with an x plus one. Okay. No, because now we have a product, though, that's equal to 0. So you set the x minus 3 equal to 0. You set the x plus 1 equal to 0. Right? If two things multiply, this times this equals 0. That means either this is equal to 0 or this is equal to 0. Right? You have to be equal to 0. And so then add 3 to both sides, you get x equals 3. Subtract 1 from both sides, you get x equals negative 1. So what's our answer here, Mark? A, B, C, or D? It's C. C. C is the answer. C is the answer there. OK? <clears throat> I'm going to skip number three because that was just like the homework. OK? We'll come back to that later. I'm going to skip number three for now. Questions on number two, though, before we move on. OK? So let's turn the page here to number four. OK? Turn the page here to number four. Number four, number four, number four. Number four says, identify which of the following is the, now we got to watch this, fully factored form of the expression 5x to the fourth plus 30x to the third plus 40x squared. Okay? So we're going to take this 5x to the fourth plus 30x to the third plus 40x squared, and we're going to factor it. Okay? So let's see what kind of things we can factor out here. First of all, again, let's check our GCF. Let's see if there's a GCF. So Tyler L, again, we're number four there, Tyler L. You can look at your own paper there if you need to. OK, Tyler L, is there a GCF? Is there something we can take out from all three of these terms here? Uh, five. OK, yes, they all divide by 5. So we'll take a 5 out. And that leaves behind x to the fourth here. 30 divided by 5, Tyler, is? Five. Nope. That's uh, 25. That's Six. Six. Yep, here, I can zoom in some here for you, too. There you go. Is that better? 6x to the third, and then 40 divided by 5? 8. OK, now, Tyler, is there any more numbers we can factor out? Is there any other number that we can divide 1, 6, and 8 by? 
Does one divide by two evenly? No. So in other words, is there any other number we can divide out here? No. Okay, no. All right, great. Thank you, Tyler. Let's go to um, Sean. Sean, is there anything else we can factor out here? Yeah, how many, how, what, what can we factor out here? Alex, 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 Alex. You really can't help yourself, I know. I need to move you, I guess. Ms. Mulcahy, do you have any ideas about where we should move, Alex? I have to go on the other side of the room. Shh. No, I know, Alex, you just can't help yourself. We have to move you. What's that? No, 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 no. Alex is going to stay here. What's that? No, Simon likes where he is. And I like, you like where you are, right, Simon? Yeah. No, I don't want to move you. I, I want to. I want to put him in an empty space. Hmm. No, I don't want you. To move. All right, we'll try this, Alex. We're gonna try. We're gonna try right here. We're gonna try right here. Okay. This might not be the best idea. We're gonna try this right here. Wait, can I bring myself here? You, you bring what you need. So, calculator, paper, pencil. Okay. We're gonna see how it goes. How do you solve a problem like Maria, right? I don't know. Sometimes you just got to try different things. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Alex, for your good sportsmanship here, too. I appreciate it. Okay. So... Back to our original question, Sean. Okay, you said we can factor out some X's. How many X's do you want to factor out here? Uh, so just an X? The, the lowest we have here is X squared. So we can actually factor out X squared, yeah. So let's factor out an X squared. So X to the fourth divided by X squared is X to the... Yep, x to the 2 or x squared. Very good. If I take an x squared out of 6x cubed, what's going to be left? Uh, 4x. So 6x, yep. And if I take the x squared out of this, what's going to be left? Uh, that would be just 8. Just 8. Very good. Okay. Now, we factored. We factored more. Is it fully factored? Yeah, no. no. Just x. Well, so... Looking at, our, looking at our trinomial here, is there any more GCF we could factor out? No, no but what, what could we maybe still do here? We could maybe still factor this trinomial, right? Yeah. Okay, so we'll do 1 times 8, 8. Okay, we need two numbers that multiply to 8 but add to 6. 2 and 4. 2 and 4, two, four big good buddy. Okay, so that's supposed to be 10, 4, right? But anyway. All right, 2x plus 4x plus 8. Okay, and now we're going to, have to factor by grouping. All right, and I let's see here. So I'm going to make some bigger parentheses here, so that way I can like more easily put smaller parentheses inside. I know Alex, you don't like it when I use two sets of parentheses there, but I'm doing. Can we just use, like, you can use brackets if you want to. It's your choice. Mm -hmm. All right, so I got five x squared from this first group. From this first group, what can we factor out? Let's go to Mark T. What can I take out from here, Mark? this group right here? X. An X. And I'm left with an X plus 2. Okay, very good. And then um, Alex, from the second group here, what can we take out? We have a 4X plus 8. What can we a factor? Four. A 4. And we're left with X plus 2. Yeah. Hey, X plus 2, X plus 2. Hey. So we've got, now i got to zoom out a little bit there. We've got 5X squared still. We're going to have the X plus 2. Now we're going to have well, what's left over is the x plus 4 then. So the answer is not D. It is B? Be careful. Look at the letter there. C is the right answer. C. Do you see the right answer? Okay. <laughs> What should I have told you? Oh, I see what you're saying. Right, so then it would make more sense. It would be like, whoa, Mr. Wig. Yeah, you see. C is the answer. C is the answer. Okay. Questions on number four. Okay. We're going to skip number five. And I'm like half tempted to skip number six, too. 
I'm going to hold off on six for now. I'm going to hold off on six for now, okay? Nope. Well, some of the ones that we're skipping, I'm going to have you guys do for homework. Which ones exactly? Probably all of them. Probably. Some people have no homework because they choose not to do it, Kendall. Yeah. Okay. Can you stick around for this one? What's that? When Mark comes back. But I want you to stick around for this, Kendall, just so you can see the, this, okay? All right, so the next thing we're going to do here is look at some word problems involving polynomials, okay? We haven't done a whole lot with this. We've just done normal old polynomials. They're hard enough on their own, but we're going to have to add some word problems in here, too, because, you know, we should be able to do that. That's the expectation, okay? So Mark owns two different stores, Frymate and Steber Incorporated and has asked both stores to determine the profit from different years since 2000. Parentheses, by the way, let x equals 0 represent the year 2000. So in other words, if x equals 0 represents the year 2000, what would represent the year 2001? 1, right? And like the year, the year 2019, the year 2019 will be represented by x equals 19, right? If 0 represents the year 2000, then 2019 will be represented by the, the number x equals 19. Anyway, the managers of the two stores report their profit expressions in terms of x years from 2000 as shown below. So here's Frymate. That's his profit for, you know, x years since 2000. And then there's Steber Incorporated's um, profit from, again, um, x years from the year 2000. Now, Letter A asks us to write the polynomial representing the total profit from the mark from uh, Mark's two stores. Okay, so if we're doing trying to do total profit here, Reagan, what should we do? Total means to do what? Yeah, total means what operation though? Oh, adding. Add. So what things are we going to add here? Um. We're going to do the total profit from Mark's two stores. So from both stores, we want to find the total profit. So what are we going to add together? Yeah, these are the two stores. No, no, these are the two. Well, I mean, that's part of the information. That's, it says Mark owns two different stores, Fry, Mate, and Steber Incorporated. So that tells us these are the stores. Okay, and these are the profit. This is the profit for Fry, Mate. This is the profit for Steber Incorporated. If I want to find the total profit for both of them, what should we add together? The eight and two. Okay, the eight and the two, and what else? The seven. The seven and the six. Yeah. Six. The six, and then what else? There's one more pair of things that get added together. And the. Seven. Yeah. So in other words, we're going to add this polynomial right here, Reagan, with this polynomial. We're going to combine like terms there. Okay, so there's Frymate, there's Steber Inc. And just combine like terms, like you said. So the 6 and the 7 go together to make 13. When I add 7x squared and 6x squared, I get 13x to the second still. Thank you, Scott. It doesn't change. Right? That's okay. You know, you don't have to do it, Reagan. I'm just in general, anybody. Okay, 2x plus 8x is going to make anybody? 10x. Right, 2 and 8 make 10. X and, well, it's just X's, so 10 X's, okay? And then negative 7 minus 16, negative 23, okay? Do we need to do anything else? Do we need to factor this? Does it say to factor it? No. No, it just says find the total. Is there any more addition that we can do here? No, we're done. This is the profit. This is total profit right there, total profit. <clears throat> okay, total profit right there, boom. Okay, letter B. Which store had the greater profit for the year 2006? Okay, so first of all, if we're talking about the year 2006, what X value is that? Let's go to Carson. If the year, if we're talking about year 2006, that means it's going to be X equals. Sky says six. Do you agree? Yeah, because 0 is for 2,000, and so the 2,006 would be 6 years later, so it would be x equals 6. OK? 
Okay, so then how are we supposed to use this x value here, Carson? What should we do? If we want to find, plug it in. Plug it in. Okay, yes. right. So six. Wh where do I plug it in? Do I plug it in here? Do I plug it in here? Do I plug it in here? Okay, in for x. But but which which I have like a bunch of different. Like I, I could plug it into the x's here. I could plug it into the x's here. I could plug it into the x's here. Sorry. This one right here. What does this equation? What does this equation list? It's the total profit. Am I looking for the? Does it say which store? What's the total profit for the year two thousand six? No. It said which store. So we're looking at individual stores for two thousand six. So I got to plug this six not in here, but where, Carson? No, I don't know. Yes, exactly right. So so Carson, these are the profit equations individually for the stores. There, does that make sense? So we're going to plug in then 7 times 6 squared plus 2 times 6 minus 7. And then for this one, we'll do 6 times 6 squared plus 8 times 6 minus 16 there. Okay? So plug those in individually, and then we'll just do the math here. So it's, let's see, 36 times 7 plus 12 minus 7. So I get 257 here. And then for here... I get 248. So which store, Carson, had the greater profit for the year 2006? Um, Primate or Steber Inc? Primate. Primate did. OK. Had the greater profit. in 2006. I'll put a big old greater than symbol there. Oops, I, well, I really messed up that. Okay. There you go. Okay, 2006. In what year will Frymate and Steber Inc. have the same profit? How do we solve? Oh, Matt, question? Is it later than that, or it could be earlier? It could be any time. Right. Any time, yeah. In what year will Frymate and Steber Inc. have the same profit? How can we then represent having the same profit? What should we do here to set up our expression? Or, yeah, how can we set up the kind of like, how can we express this mathematically? If we want to show when they're going to have the same profit, same is, the, is, is what mathematical idea? Mathematical relationship? Equal. Equal. So something's got to be equal here. What two things do we want to be equal? The Anson and Primate. Yeah, we want Steber Inc. and Primate to be the same. Okay, so we'll say 7x squared plus 2x minus 7 is going to equal what? Steber. Steber company. 6x squared plus 8x minus 16. Okay, you set them equal. How do we solve an equation like this? What do we need to do? Um, you add the right terms. Okay, so are there any like terms on the left-hand side? No. Are there any like terms on the right-hand side? No, so what you do is you do for example, plus seven on the left side, plus seven on the right side. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. I did this before, this is way easier. <coughs> I would suggest that we actually add the 16 over. I would suggest that we move all this stuff over here to the left-hand side, because that way we'll get, have a positive x squared oh, okay. term. If you move all this, if you move all this over, you, and you're not wrong, you're not wrong, but this will make it a little bit easier Maybe. if you go this way. Yeah. So let's subtract 6x squared, let's subtract um, 8x here, and let's add 16 here, and we'll do the same thing over here, minus 6x squared, minus 8x, plus 16. Okay, so that all cancels. What's going to be left over here? Zero. That's right. 7 minus 6 will be just x squared, 1x squared. 2 minus 8 is negative 6x. Negative 7 plus 16, 9. Okay. And then how do we go from something like this? What do we do now? How about you answer this and I'll let you go. <coughs> We're looking for two numbers, Dylan, right? So 1 times 9 gives us 9. We need two numbers that multiply to 9 but add to negative 6. Oh, 3 and 3. Positive 3 and positive 3? Negative 
Okay, group, group, take a X out there, take a negative three out there. Okay, X minus three and X minus three is left over. That's interesting. So we have X minus three equals zero, X minus three equals zero. So X is equal to three, twice. Okay, so we have three, three twice. It shows up twice, okay? <coughs> So, what's our answer? 2003. Yes, good Dylan. 2003. Not just x equals 3. x equals 3 represents the year 2003. And that's what our final answer is. In what year will it happen? Yes, and Dylan, yes. You may what's that? Yes. <coughs> okay. All right, I want to look at one more. Interesting. All right, I'm going to look at one more. Oh. Okay, turn to number eight. <coughs> turn to number eight. Okay, number eight, we're dealing with area and perimeter sum, too, a little bit. Read through that problem right there. Number eight says a restaurant owner wants to fence in a rectangular courtyard along one side of the restaurant for outdoor dining. The total area that she can fence in is 600 square feet. Okay. So how many sides of the courtyard are going to have fence? Three. Only three. Because the fourth side is going to have the restaurant. Okay, it won't need fencing there. So you can see here we have one, two, three measurements, x, 50 minus x, and x, because we only need this much fencing. Okay? So the total area she can fence in is 600 square feet. So letter A says write an equation to find the area of the fenced region, or write an equation for the area of this fenced region. How do you find the area of, well, a rectangle or a square? This is a rectangle. It looks like a square. It's a rectangle. It says a rectangular courtyard there. So, how do you find the area of a rectangle? What do you do? Area equals. Oh no. Length times width. Thank you. L times W. Okay. What is the length of our courtyard? We don't know that, right? You're estimating. I see what you're trying to do. That's good. But what is it labeled as? What is the length labeled as in our picture here? X. X times, and then what's the width labeled as? 50 minus X. Exactly right. OK. And what's our area have to equal? 600 square feet, right? So it's got to equal 600. So there is our equation. 600 equals the length times the width. Length times width. Now, I'm not going to get into argument about semantics here. Some of you might say, Mr. Wood, I think this is the length and this is the width. That's fine. It's going to still end up being the same kind of equation. Okay, if you want to do it that way, you can. Good. I'm glad you think it's interesting. So there it is. Okay, there's the equation. That's all we had to do. For letter B, which value of x will give her the area she wants? So we're going to take our equation here. And what do we need to do here to find the value of x? What do we have to do? We're going to have to do what? Which value of x would give her the area she wants? What do we have to do now? You have to uh, factor. So it already is factored, right? But what's the problem, Mark? What do we want this to equal? Zero. Oh, and it's not equal to zero. So yeah, it's equal to 600 instead. So let's go ahead and distribute the x. We're going to have to multiply it out here. So you get 50x minus x squared equals 600. And then now to make it equal 0, what should we do to both sides here? Anybody? Subtract 600. Subtract 600 from both sides. OK, we get 0 there. 
Is 600 like with anything up here? No, no so we're just going to write negative 600 plus 50x minus x squared. Okay, now this is not in standard form, so I'm going to rewrite it in standard form here. Um, so it'll be negative x squared plus 50x minus 600. Okay. Ugh, we have a negative x squared here. I don't like having a negative lead coefficient like that. I don't like it. So guess what we can do? Let, yeah, we'll just stop. Say IDK. <laughs> no, we're going to multiply both sides by negative 1. Okay, aren't we allowed in an equation to multiply both sides by the same number? So what's negative 1 times 0? Zero? 0. What's negative 1 times negative x squared? positive x squared. Negative 1 times 50x minus 50x. Negative 1 times negative 600, positive 600. Much easier now, right? I like that. We got some positive numbers. Okay, so 1 times 600. Now we're going to do what Mark said to factor here. So I'm going to have to go back up here. Yeah, I think. Yep, yep, yep. So zero, 1 times 600 is 600. And then, yeah, to multiply to 600 but add to negative 50, it's going to be negative 30, negative 20 there. So we'll break up that middle term. Okay, factor by grouping. Factor an x out there. Factor a negative 20 out there. Okay. And then, question, Sky? Uh, Okay. Still equal to zero. Ah, that's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. You're right. So we have x minus 30 equals zero, x minus 20 equals zero. Well, I appreciate your honesty, Alex. But the thing is, you can you're very capable of doing this stuff. I mean, it's a lot of writing, but it's like it's not like it's not different than anything we've done up to this point, right? If I well, put this in front of you, you, we were able to do this for the homework and stuff. We, can you spend more than uh, two class periods in the test? You spend more than two classes. I was going to say that I didn't finish it. If you don't finish, then well, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. If I feel like you're just you know dilly dallying and stuff like that, then no, I'm trying. Then if you're really trying, then absolutely, I'll give you more time. If you really feel like you need more time, yeah. Okay. If I see that you're working hard and you like really just need more time, absolutely. Okay. So um, we get two answers here. Okay, we get two answers here. So x could be 30 or x could be 20. Okay, and I feel like that's weird. Yes, Ella, question, comment? Can you just do another sentence? Can you just like 30 or 20 like the 20 zero? Just like add it? Yes, let me see here. Hang on. So, okay, I see what the problem is. Okay, I got it now. Yeah. Um, all right, I'm sorry. And ask your question again, please. Sorry. Can you just like the amount of x's? Mm-hmm. Like, so the answer here, and I think I see what your question. Let me see if my explanation then will answer kind of what your question is. So there are two there are two values for x that result in the courtyard having an area of six hundred square feet. There are two values for x that result in the courtyard having an area of six hundred square feet. We could use 30 for x, or we could use 20 for x. Follow me so far? Okay. Now, part C asks, so we can use either one of these an answers, and that's fine. Part C asks, though, what is the least amount of fencing used? If we're trying to get use the least amount of fencing, which one of our two answers should we use? 20, right? Because 20 will result in the least amount of fencing used, necessary to still find that 600-square-foot um, um, area. So we can actually get a 600 square foot area by having x be 20 feet, okay? But that's not the, the total amount of fencing, right? X is just one side of the courtyard, right? So we're actually going to have 20 here, 20 here, and then how much fencing will be here? 50 minus x. 
So this will be 30. So 20 plus 30 plus 20, 70 feet of fencing. Okay, 70 feet of fencing there. Okay, if we use the 30, right, we'd be using more fencing. So isn't that crazy that you can enclose a certain area, a certain rectangular area, so example here, 600 square feet, you can enclose a rectangular area of 600 square feet two different ways. One, by using 30 feet of fencing, and one by using 20 feet of fencing. Something to think about, right, for like the future. If you have a certain kind of like area you want to enclose, you can actually like do it more efficiently with less fencing here. That costs you less money, you know, than this does. The shape will be different, and that might be, you know, a concern of yours, but you can make that rectangle rectangle by just doing 20 feet instead of using 30 feet there. Okay, you still cover the same amount of square feet. Something to think about. All right. What I like for homework then. So here's what I'm going to give you guys for homework, okay? So I want you to try number three for homework. I'll write this on the board here too. So number three. Maybe I'll just write it on the board so that way you guys can see it. Number three. I want you to try number five. We'll hold up on number six. So not six. And then number nine. Yep. Three, five, nine for homework, okay? Three, five, nine for homework. Okay. Three, five, nine. Oh, yes. Thank you for saying something. <coughs> I'll pass those back right now, okay? You're lending what? That's considerate of you. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, let me pass back the quizzes that are finished. So not everyone finished their quizzes. I'm going to have those of you that didn't finish um, on Friday, I'm going to have you finish those tomorrow, okay, in class. But for those of you that did finish, I'm going to get those back to you right now, if I can remember where I put them, right here. Okay, we had some very good grades from a lot of people. We had some what? We had some pretty good grades from some people here, okay? So Mark, good job. What did you get, Mark? Yeah, Mark. <laughs> yeah, Mark. Yeah, two questions wrong. <laughs> and really just parts. Just parts. So. Yeah.